to remain as TSAC or what kind of, you know, uh, so I, I, I welcome anyone who's anyone who hasn't already participated in that conversation to, to join us, um, even if it's just um, reading the comments we've already made, making a comment of your own or uh, drafting an addition if you feel like we're mi missing something. But that's all we have for the Governing Documents Committee. Thank you. Say, Cap. Um, I can go first, I guess. So um, I've been talking with CU Denver and CCD. Um, they are in the process of appointing or getting their SACAP members in there. Um, and I look forward, I told them I look forward to meeting with them once they're, um, in this case, appointed by CU Denver. Um, I believe CCD as well. So um, I'm going to meet them at some point, but that's not, we don't know quite yet when that the time is. Daphne? Yeah, there's really nothing with SACAB. Um, I'm sure things will start in the fall semester once they get their new representatives appointed, but until then, I don't think there will be very much. Thank you, Stephanie. Gabe, are you around? Board of Trustee? Nope. Okay, moving on. Um, Social Media Committee. Um. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so for the social media committee, we next week are going to talk about potentially having an amendment for a Canva subscription where uh, I and other members of the committee will be able to make uh, social media posts and flyers for the events, events such as the um, uh, um, the school supplies drive, you know, and then um, like the, the food pantry or the um, pizza party uh financial aid party and just just some of the other events like that that we've been talking about and i know um another event that we kind of were playing around with was a uh like an essay an essay competition um so yeah so next week we will bring bring it to the uh council to examine the cost benefit analysis of a canvas subscription Sorry, we are, I guess we are doing that today. Yep, that's under uh, B or A or B, B of the new business on section three. Okay, um, CSGC representatives, I can take on to that. Um, we initially had a scheduled meeting with the chair of the CSGC, which is the Colorado Student Government Coalition. Um, that meeting was canceled uh, to be rescheduled, so I have yet to reschedule it, but it should be within the next couple of weeks. She said it wasn't very imperative, but she would like to get it done before with all of this, the schools before um, the start of this next school year. So as we get that scheduled and find out what's going on, I will update the council. Policy Advisory Committee. I can note for the Policy Advisory Committee that they have an I forwarded this email to all members of the council that right now they are circulating a new email electronic communications survey um, for policy to change about um, anybody on staff or representing the university will use the letterhead and use the school account instead of personal account. So if you want to have a look at that, please check your email. We have not yet met, but we will in July. Thank, thank you for that. Mike, do you have anything for the Treasury Committee? Um, only a question for Armando by chance, and it's okay if you don't have this with you right now. Um, so I was told by Dave, the previous advisor, that um, we would be getting our um, budget allocation from MSU Denver um, generally by the end of the month. Um, it's okay if you don't know this now, but um, do you know what that is? And by chance, do you, if you have a number for you, do you have it for us? No, I actually I apologize. I do not have that on that number yet. Dave has uh, he's on annual leave this week going into next week. Um, I did put on his radar for when he comes back to, for us to have that conversation. So probably by Tuesday, Wednesday, I hope I should be able to get that to y'all. Awesome, I appreciate it. Um, Dan, do you want me to go over the um, budget recommendation committee as well? Yes, please do that. So um, it's not much of an update. Um, they've they're supposed to have a meeting today to kind of go vote some things over, but um, that meeting has been scheduled till next Friday. So um, next Friday, I should have some more information on what they plan on doing, what they plan on voting on, et cetera, et cetera. 
Okay, thank you for that, Mike. Uh, student faculty student fairs committee. Three. There's been no meeting yet, and they won't meet until fall. Thank you. The COVID response committee, Alan. Uh, we're having a meeting Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Uh, advisor updates. I know Dr. Brown's not in today, but Armando, do you have anything? Um, no, I don't have too much going on. Um, I did. I will send out. We got an email about the Equity Day of Dialogue Symposium. I wanted to share it all with y'all. It's going to be Thursday, August 4th on campus from 9 to 5. Um, I haven't seen any cost in regard to, like any uh, literature regarding to cost. I do believe it's free. Um, I do think it's something that'll be beneficial for y'all. So I will share that to all of y'all um, as this week ends. But other than that, no, um, myself, Dr. Brown, or Dr. Brown and I, uh, we had our CESA retreat on Wednesday with all of the CESA staff and we had some really good conversation. Um, and we will be kind of pointing out some things and we'll be collaborating first, Dr. Brown and I, and then bringing some things to y'all's attention to see how um, CSAC can help us out and what we are looking for for just faculty, staff, student communication and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but nothing major. I will send that email for the registration link for y'all if to see if y'all are interested. If not, it's all good. Um, but no, I hope y'all have a safe weekend. Please stay safe. And yeah, that's all for us right now. Thank you, Mardo. All right, so on to section three, the new business. Um, so we're going to start off with this discussion of school supplies drive, kind of a continuation of the conversation that we had last week. Paul, Paul, go ahead. So just to keep it brief, um, we're still working on uh, like ironing out the details of the school supplies drive, and we're planning big. We really would like to make this a tri-institutional event, and I've been working with um, other members of the committee like Re, Naomi, Mike, Alex, um, Dan, and the invitation is open to any others interested um, to make this happen. We've been meeting with Nickel of CCD. We've been having talks with Juan and Morgan of UCD. And um, there's another person Naomi's talking to at CCD. It's my understanding that we have a really strong um, agreement around um, this school supplies drive being a good thing. And so um, I, I would just extend an invitation, like with the Governing Documents Committee, if anyone here is interested in helping us um, continue our work in putting together this school supplies drive, we we welcome you. Um, get in while the getting's good. Really, we want to have this, um, you know, ready a, a few weeks prior to um, school actually starting. That way, we can start advertising as well as, um, you know, working with other student governments to uh, pick a date when we're going to have this thing before students go out and start buying school supplies, that sort of thing. And so, um, yeah, that's everything we got for the, the discussion of the school supplies drive. Thank you for that, Paul. OK, now on to. Item B, motion to purchase an annual Canva Pro membership for advertising purposes. I've noticed that there has been some discussion on this in the chat. So do you want to present this, Paul, and then we can open it up for debate or discussion? Thank you, Dan. Um, I personally have used Canva in the creation of um, media for student organizations that I'm a part of, like Chess Club. If you've seen any of our nice flyers for Chess Club, it was used making it was made using Canva. Um, same goes for the Students for a Democratic Society. All our flyers are made using Canva. And so it's a really powerful, easy to use platform, and that's why I suggest we use it. Um, I know there exists a free option with a greatly reduced uh, number of templates and you know font sizes or like font types and stuff like that. But if we pay for uh, just $120, which would you know come out to what $12 a month over the course of the year, um, we would have um, a really nice collaborative platform for us to produce um, stellar media for marketing and stuff like that. I think um, it's ease of use. It's ability to collaborate as though you're working on an online doc. Multiple people can edit a document at the same time. And so it's really easy to just collaborate online. Um, I think it, um, it would be a really good idea to acquire this annual membership personally. Um, not everybody is very proficient with the Adobe equivalent like Photoshop or InDesign. And I think that this would be a much more user friendly 
and uh, efficacious way of, pro of producing marketing materials. Thank you. Alex. Um, <clears throat> I also would like uh, agree with Paul um, that I think it would be a worthwhile investment. Some of the chat here um, is talking about how we have an account, but it's not a premium account. Um, so I'm not sure how much the difference would be. Um, and if we already have an account, we can probably just upgrade it for a little bit extra too. Um, it's worth, okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, and I know I know that I've, I've already volunteered myself to start doing some of the marketing material for the school supplies drive. So just to make my life easier, I think it would be cool. It'd be ideal if we could vote on this early, get the get the membership ready so that way I can start making uh, marketing material for all of the events that we're going to be doing. Um, uh, and just so that way I can stay ahead of the curve. Uh, that would that would make my life a lot easier. Thank you. Any further discussion you want to post? Oh, Stephanie, go ahead. Hi, yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and send the password and email over to you, um, to you guys, whoever's taking over the social media stuff. Um, right now, um, I did all of our social media advertising marketing stuff last year um, for social media, and there was a lot of there are a lot, like so many options to like choose from without the premium subscription. If you guys really wanted it, I'm not opposed, but either way, it's it's a really good platform. I wouldn't see why we wouldn't want to use it. So, but I'll send that over to you guys right now. Thank you, Stephanie. Alex. I, I can also add that like I have the Adobe suite as well. So if if we have to compromise by not getting the Pro version of Canva, I can create entirely new content as well. Hey, Paul. Well, I do think these are both very good points. You know, there is a good selection of templates and stuff to use. Um, that's for static um, images. Canva also has a tremendous amount of like short video editing abilities for like animated graphics, among other. Uh, things that we could use. Um, and while I do think we could be using Adobe InDesign, I think it presents a learning curve and like an obstacle for other members of the council who I know are interested in participating in, say, the school supplies drive creation that, um, you know, we may be, I think we should stick with Canva for ease of use purposes. Personally, though, we can definitely use these other um, softwares provided by the university. I know that Ree and Naomi had both expressed uh, a lot of interest in producing marketing materials, and so we use Canva. All through, all you know, all three or four of us can sit down and you know work on a document collaboratively and faster. Okay, thank you. Those. Oh, James. Sorry, James. No, you're all good. Um, personally, obviously, I don't have any sort of experience in social media or marketing design. Um, I just want to ensure that, like, if we do end up going with a hundred twenty dollar version, we actually use it to its full ability and not just something where we're only using like the free uh, areas, like the free templates. So I, I'm okay with us purchasing it, but only if we can ensure that we absolutely use it to its full potential, making our purchase uh, worth it and not something that we just spent and we're like, well, maybe we didn't really need that. So I would like to see if we can make sure that the free version isn't already um, useful. And if it isn't, then we can definitely go ahead with that $120 purchase. Thank you, James. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. I just wanted to clarify. So James, did you want, um, maybe if I didn't understand the last bit there, did you want us to um, continue to consider this or how do you feel about us like voting on this account acquisition today? Uh, I just I want to make sure we're we're going to actually fully utilize it. So I mean, if you think we're going to use it and every bit of it, and we're going to get our money's worth, then I will you know, fully give my um, vote for it and agree to it. But only if you believe that we're going to actually get the full use of it. To can I? Uh, to speak to that, I think just in response, I think that we will for sure. Um, and I and one of the things that I think is really nice about it is somebody like yourself who you admit no marketing experience, no graphic design experience, me neither. 
Canva is the kind of platform that it will that can empower a person like ourselves to do those things in an easy way that still looks really presentable. And that's why that's really where I think the, I think the, the value comes in. Comes in. Yeah, if you think you can use it, then I will fully give my vote for it. Bree, do you have something? Just like to move that we uh, purchase the Pro Canva membership for $120. So someone motioned, seconded. Okay, someone moved to make a main motion and it was seconded, so we'll move on to a vote. Alan. Yay. Stephanie. Mike. I vote in the affirmative. James. Yay. Bree. Yay. Alex. Yay. Naomi. Yay. Paul. Yay. And yay. OK, unanimous. The motion's been passed. It, uh, OK. Yeah, they're not here today. I am. Hi, Dan. Dan. Oh, you're here. Yay. Hi, Hi Gabe. Dan. Hi, uh, I vote yes. OK, yes. I'm sorry, Gabe. I, I... Yeah, Dan. You're good. Oh, OK, cool. Well, Good to see you. Glad to have you here, Gabe. So then on to the next matter of business. Um, number F, Paul. Hello, everyone. So number F is um, Council Resolution 22 uh, for the year of 2022. Um, or this will be Resolution 3. But I've sent a I've sent a copy of it via email as well as posting it in the TSAC general. Um, if anyone wants to follow along, um, I will just uh, start by, um, you know, it's called a resolution condemning the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs v. Jackson, this most recent decision by the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade and um, make illegal abortion for uh, make illegal abortions for, um, or rather, make abortions illegal for 26 states. Uh, given the trigger laws that were in place in those states. And so um, given the email we had received from Will Simpkins last week um, asking us for a response, um, I thought it, it merited a, a, a genuine response from the council, you know, um, and that's in part in my abstract here, which I'll just read shortly. Um, it says, we, the Student Advocacy Council, were elected by the student body of the Metropolitan State University of Denver as their advocates, and we represent the voice of the students at the institutional level. In these times, we cannot remain silent. We unequivocally condemn the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Debs, or Dobbs v. Jackson. This decision has overturned the precedent set by Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, which established and affirmed the right to an abortion. We believe this decision is an attack on women, trans men, non-binary people that can give birth, as well as their partners, their families, and our society overall. We recognize that this ruling will jeopardize the lives and well-being of these people and that it will create further barriers to higher education. This last year, the student government of MSU Denver voted and approved SR 2104, a resolution condemning the spread of medical misinformation and supporting safe access to abortion, a, re a resolution committing to setting an example to other institutions of higher education by ending the abortion stigma cycle on campus. It was in this resolution that we affirmed that the Metropolitan State University of Denver supports the bodily autonomy of all persons, including access to abortion and other reproductive related services. Our state legislature stands with us. Earlier this year, they codified a person's fundamental right to make a reproductive health care decision free from government interference with HB 221279, the Reproductive Health Equity Act. We, the student uh, Advocacy Council reaffirm SR 2104, and we stand with the Colorado State Legislature's HB 22 120, uh, sorry, 1279, in support of and defense of access to reproductive health care. We demand that the Metropolitan State University join us and use its voice to denounce this decision publicly and unequivocally. We ask that the university allow employees of all genders the space and time to grieve, 
express their frustrations and protest this assault on our rights. We ask that the university donate and match donations to bail funds and assistance and assistance groups working to expand abortion access for women and pregnant people in impacted states. We ask again that the, we ask as well that the university enact company wide policy change going forward to ensure that the university does not aid or bet anti abortion causes ideologies groups or public figures, including by university funding, the use of university facilities, public statement or otherwise. So this is the um, abstract of the bill. I would motion to uh, continue reading it and just read the rest of it here, uh, minus the addendum. Uh, I've put on two addendums being the um, the two bills mentioned. So is there a second to? It's, I second the motion. Okay. Paul. All right. Um, so, whereas the Metropolitan State University of Denver Student Advocacy Council stands in solidarity with all students on campus seeking reproductive and abortion care or sex education, whereas the Metropolitan State University of Denver Student Adv Advocacy Council is committed to ending the abortion stigma cycle and ensuring all students on campus seeking reproductive and abortion care or sex, sex education are given medically accurate information, whereas the Metropolitan State University of Denver Student Advocacy Council is committed to setting an example to other institutions of higher education in ending the abortion stigma cycle on campus. Whereas access to abortion and reproductive health care is currently under attack across the nation, the Supreme Court decision Dobbs v. Jackson, a women's health organization, United States Supreme Court docket number 19-1392, uh, jeopardizes access to legal abortion care for tens of millions of people, particularly those living in the most uh, living in most southern and midwestern states. Whereas there are social, moral and economic benefits when people are able to decide whether and when to have children, access to family planning allows all Coloradans to pursue personal, educational, financial and familial goals and helps decrease the health and socioeconomic disparities disproportionately faced by people of color and people with low incomes. Whereas Colorado has a strong history of supporting and protecting access to reproductive health care, including for communities of color. Colorado was the first state to decriminalize abortion care in an overwhelmingly bipartisan effort in 1967. Well before the Supreme Court affirmed the right to abortion care nationwide in Roe v. Wade. Colorado is a national model for access to family planning services, including long acting reversible contraceptives. Whereas despite repeated rejections of attacks on abortion care by the people of Colorado, there have been over 40 legislative attempts to criminalize or outlaw abortion since 2010. Colorado voters have demonstrated that they trust individuals to make their own ethical decisions about abortion care based on what is best for their health and their families. Whereas Colorado law ensures that a pregnant individual has a fundamental right to continue a pregnancy or and give birth or to have an abortion and to make decisions about how to exercise that right. Whereas Colorado law states that a fertilized egg, embryo or fetus does not have independent or derivative rights under the laws of this state. Whereas Colorado bill HB 22, 1279 section 25-6-404 says a public entity is prohibited, uh, our public entities prohibit actions. A public entity shall not deny restrict, interfere with, or discriminate against an individual's fundamental right to refuse contraception or use it, or to continue a pregnancy and give birth, or to have an abortion in the regulation or provision of benefits, facilities, um, or otherwise. All right, on to the next. Um, and they shall not deprive through prosecution, punishment, or other means an individual of the individual's right to act or refrain uh, from acting during the individual's own pregnancy based on the potential, actual, or perceived impact on the pregnancy, the pregnancy's outcomes, or on the individual's health. Whereas abortion is a highly stigmatized topic, this stigma operates in a cycle. When people are shamed for accessing or providing abortions, abortions go underreported and public discourse about abortion is suppressed. This leads to the idea that abortion is rare, even though one in four women have had an abortion by the time they are 45. When abortion is seen as rare, it perpetuates the idea that people who access or prov provide abortions are deviant. This leads to discrimination against people who access or provide abortions, which causes people to fear being shamed for accessing or providing abortions, leading to underreporting and suppression of discourse. This cycle leads to medical ignorance, state control over women, trans and non-binary people's bodies, and violence against people who access or provide abortions. 
Therefore, be it hereby further resolved. The Student Advocacy Council of the Metropolitan State University of Denver condemns the anti-human decision by the Supreme Court. Therefore, therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we demand that the Metropolitan State University join us and use its voice to denounce this decision publicly and unequivocally. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we ask that the university donate and match donations to bail funds and assistance groups working to expand abortion for access to women, uh, well, working to expand abortion access for women and pregnant people in impacted states. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we ask that the university allow staff and faculty of all genders the space and the time to grieve, express their frustrations, and protest this assault on our rights. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we ask that the university enact company-wide policy change going forward to ensure that the university does not aid or abet anti-abortion causes, ideologies, groups, or public figures, including via university funding, the use of university facilities, public statement, or otherwise. And um, towards the end, I've just included those two, like the resolution that we passed last year, as well as the state one. So that concludes the document. I would motion that we limit debate on this issue to 10 minutes. There a second to that motion. I second. That I motion. second. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone opposed to, to, to uh, making debate only 10 minutes? If so, speak up now. No, but I can't raise my hand because I don't have my okay, through unanimous consent. Then the debate is limited. Oh, wait, Naomi, did you have something? I'm sorry. Naomi. Uh, first of all, Paul, that was very beautifully written, and um, we are all very appreciative of that. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this for us. Um, the only thing I think I have no problem with the thing itself. I think we're going to have we need to prepare for some pushback from the university because I think their main concern is going to be that we are then going to be inflicting our personal opinions on um, others who are in favor of abortion, which don't get me wrong. I think they can kick rocks, but um, there's you know, that's just our opinion. So just know that we might have to be prepared for that. But as soon as uh, but if they approve this, then of course, like it's not going to matter. But just be prepared for that setback. And we are 100 percent behind you on it. Paul. I would like to speak to the motivation as to why I wrote this document. Um, I will tell you that it wasn't. Um, I, I, I didn't come here via my own personal opinion. I, ha I hold many personal opinions that I do not plan on bringing to the table here in the, the TSAC, right? Um, but I do see this issue as being a fundamental question of um, of women's liberation, people who uh, the liberation of people who can give birth, bodily autonomy, and access to education. This is while it may not be here in Colorado right now. Um, this what's going on in our country right now is an assault on people's access to education, among other things. And so we absolutely um, should say something um, The I, I would um, I would definitely say that uh, I wouldn't reduce any any um, any part of this to opinion, but I can understand why you'd say that. And I, I do anticipate, you know, some folks disagreeing, but Ultimately, that's what led to this happening in our country. And um, in order to, um, you know, further the discourse, we we should um, we should lay this out. I mean, um, it, to to limit ourselves in any way because um, we fear uh, backlash would be to you know silence the discourse, silence um, the the student voice, which is the TSAC. Thank you. Any further any any further insight from anybody? I am against this motion. It's Alan Williams. Um, for many reasons, I think there's some things that are written in here that are actually pretty startling. Um, first of all, I do agree with Naomi. We're a representative body for the entire campus, and I think fundamentally this body shouldn't make stands that may make students including Christians and Muslims and other people that don't believe in abortion, uh, at least, you know, fundamentally, uh, we shouldn't be taking this body and putting it into a place where we take a stand like that and marginalize further these people with their beliefs because we do represent the uh, 
the entire student body and not everybody believes in pro-choice. Um, I think this stifles debate, this motion stifles debate. Um, and I would say that who's defending the bodily autonomy of the unborn, which are completely vulnerable and innocent. I think this, this whole motion here uh, largely uh, basically supports one political agenda over another. A university is supposed to be a place of free debate. Um, I know it's a controversial and debatable topic, and we could get into the nitty gritty of it. Um, but I just disagree. This body should take a side, you know, against, you know, who knows how many student bodies. We really don't know what everybody in this student body believes, but I know everybody doesn't believe in this. Um, since 1967, science had advanced to keep babies alive at a much earlier time. Um, and I believe with the exception of rape and incest or a topic or other dangerous pregnancies, uh, that's why I don't believe in it, is I believe that if a baby can live out in the open air, that they should have that right. Um, I think abortion is anti-human. Um, and then this thing here to ask that the university donate match donations to bail funds um, comes off to me as you're supporting criminal activity with protests and things like that. And I, I think that's ridiculous. Um, I think the word misinformation here um, is biased. I think it's merely a catchphrase to stifle opposition. And, um, you know, there's some language in here regarding getting this student, you know, if we pass this, that, you know, students have to, uh, I'll, I'm just going to give me a chance here, um, that it would turn over to the student conduct and behavioral intervention. And I realize you're, sent, you're talking about groups, but I think you definitely should also add something to this since I know I'm outnumbered and it's probably going to pass that allows individuals on campus uh, to freely debate um, without being subject to the student and behavioral intervention coordinator. I think that's wrong. That's definitely stifling of people's opinions. And I think this is a green light to persecute those students who do not agree with the politics of pro-choice. And uh, so I do not give my support to this motion in any way, shape or form. And I'm done there. Thank you, Alan. There's still time for debate. Oh, Naomi, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, there. Naomi. Sorry, I can't work these things sometimes. Um, then Paul. I, uh, I'm lost for words right now at that. Um, but I do agree that uh, I think that was a misunderstanding of me opposing. I wasn't um, opposing Paul. I was just trying to say that we should be prepared for backlash, such as Alan's, um, you know, standpoint, which is fine. You know, people are going to be have their own choice in what they think. And I think that's, you know, our one of the rights we're supposed to have in the United States. But speaking of rights, we are being stripped of those rights consistently. And this was definitely an attack on women. If you do not have a uterus, you do not get to make decisions about our bodies, especially when you've never had to go through the experience of going through something like that. Um, whether it was something that was medically concerning as to, you know, having a stillborn or something of the sort or the potential of having something like that, a miscarriage, anything of that sort that can actually cause a problem to a woman's body should not be under your jurisdiction to decide whether or not it's right or wrong. And religiously speaking, yes, there will be people who disagree. And I completely you know, agree to that. And we do allow religious freedom here in the United States of America, which means that if you don't want to participate in it, you don't have to. That's your right right there. But guess what? You have that right. We don't even have that right in some states right now. So this is something that I 100% support and will back on every platform that I possibly can to ensure that women and that the, um, that I'm sorry, that MSU will back us as well because it's, it's wrong. We shouldn't be, um, you know, supporting other people who are in support of taking away women's rights because this is a woman's right. A man has nothing to do with this. And yes, there is an extent where you help make that child, but guess what? You don't have to go through the nine months of labor to carry that child either. You may have to support that woman 100% but you do not have to carry that child and put your body through an extensive amount of pain and suffering to birth that child. Thank you. Just know that um, <clears throat> debate has two more minutes um, for that motion that Paul Paul put in for stifling or for limiting debate. Agree. I think I'm next. Oh, you're all good. Paul and then Re, then Alex. I'll just yield my time to Re. 
I just wanted to quickly say that I think it is our um, obligation and uh, position as a council that we support the students in need and those who are having to make the hard decision about having an abortion or not and having the resources and support that they need. Um, it's more our obligation, I believe, to be able to be there and, and, and get the university to be there and uh, appeal to the university to be there to support them. And this was done, I believe, by this paperwork uh, by the, the student government last year as well and put forward to the university. So there is precedent. Thank you, Ree. Alex? All right, thanks. So I'd like to clarify a few things. Um, there won't be students who are going to be penalized for voicing their opinions. The, the penalization comes with denying, restricting, interfering, or discriminating against individuals' fundamental rights to use contraception or the spread of uh, deceptive uh, information about abortion. You know, essentially, if you have a nurse who's pro-choice and then they are propagating a person into not getting abortion while also giving them medical advice. That's that's what this is talking about. At no point in time will someone lose their ability to free speech. Um, I'd also like to emphasize that this is backing what's already included in the House bill from Colorado's uh, 22-1279 um, Act. So there is that. Um, yeah, this it, it people can still voice their opinions. Um, the, if you if you're in a position of responsibility and you, and you hurt somebody, then you that's when you're going to get in trouble. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Um, Stephanie. Hey, um, so I have a question for our for Armando on this. Um, so has anything to your knowledge been done by um, Simpkins, um, the president, anything like any kind of statement other than nothing? I don't know if they've like put anything out. So like if we were to pass this, like what do you think in your opinion would happen? Yeah. Um... Thank you. I appreciate the question. Um, as of my knowledge, the last thing we heard uh, was the president asking for the students' opinions as to not so much of what their actions should be, but they just want to feel what the what the pulse of the campus is, honestly. Um, nothing has happened in this sense, and I think nothing will probably be said or happen until probably the next week's coming because not well, unfortunately, coincidentally, it's kind of the 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 timing of everything. We're about to go into a holiday federal bank holiday like weekend. So um, I know a lot of offices are closed. Um, so nothing in my radar has happened um, in terms of what will happen in terms of if y'all post this resolution or this or this, this statement going out. Uh, nothing can or will happen at the end of the day. You guys are representing and voicing the the majority of student bodies and student, uh, not student bodies, student voices and opinions. So I think you are well within your right to kind of put forth that opinion and that um, that statement. Um, I can talk to Dr. Barone. Um, I can talk to Dr. Barone and I can get y'all a more clear answer on what the consequences are, positive or negative, as to if anything was to happen. But in my in my time in history and education, I don't think anything really can be backlash towards y'all. Like at the end of the day, y'all have the most power on this campus as students with voices. So if this is the way you choose to to use your voices, the way you choose to use it. I hope that answers your question. Most definitely. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Armando. Um, Alan. Yes, um, oh. I would like to add to this. Um, and we're done. If we do vote on this, I'd like to vote on it after something is added to it that guarantees what a few members have said that this only goes against our organizations and it won't infringe on a student's free speech and ability to debate on campus. Um, I'd like that in writing in this. I think it's only right that we do guarantee the free speech of students, free debate and opinions, especially in the classroom without them being subject to disciplinary processes, at the university. Um, before we vote on it, I think it's the right thing to do. And, you know, we could either draw it in right now and approve that, or we could wait one week and vote on it then. I say that recognizing I'm the 
minority member when it comes to this opinion. Thank you, Alan. So that's actually the end of the debate for this. We limited it to 10 minutes. So um, move to consider the question. That's we have a second on that. Yeah, yeah. I I second it too. Okay, so their main motion was moved to consider the resolution and it was seconded. I'll let the record reflect that. All right, we'll move on to voting. motion to so we could vote on the resolution if you want to amend it you'll make it make a move make a motion to amend the motion i'd like to make a i'd like to make a motion to amend it this motion all right um there was a motion made to amend the resolution is there a second on that so no guarantee of students free speech in this in writing uh, I, I think students that? have the right to a freedom of speech by the American Constitution and Colorado, regardless of that, can never interfere with that, despite if it's on a university by call of state law, nobody can interfere with that federal right. So I think you'll be perfectly fine. There's a piece in here that talks about being turned into the disciplinary process, the university. I think it should be clarified. I'll second it. I'll second it. So it's been seconded. Um, so this is the amendment. What? So can you clarify what you want to amend, Alan? I would just like to add a guarantee that students, it would take two sentences to guarantee that students have the right to free speech and debate without being subject to disciplinary process regarding this issue. I ask what line of the SR 2104 you're referring to when you say that they'd be subject to, um, because in my understanding, this was a, way to um, approach the dishonest organizational registration techniques that the mobile clinic was, uh, the Alternatives Pregnancy Center was engaging in. I, the way I read it, it didn't really read like it would um, stifle student debate or, or anything on this, on this issue, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how just guaranteeing, it's lines 142 through 147 on the uh, SGA from last year, it's talking about, um, student conduct and behavioral inter in, in, uh, intervention coordinator. If this resolution is adopted, it would be part of the student org's policies, which if people failed to comply with it, they would fall. It says people failed to comply with it. They'd fall under their failure to comply policy, student code of conduct. I'd just like to clarify that, that it's talking about organizations and not individuals. Organizations engaging in medical disinformation on our campus. Yeah, this is people. So I just would like to clarify it and it doesn't water down your amendment in any way. This is, to speak to what Reese saying, this isn't a, this um, part of the document is an addendum. It's a piece of, it's a resolution that the council has already voted on and adopted. And so um, I would question, I would question why we might weaken what was a very effective piece of student government legislation that has barred these um, alternative pregnancy centers from misleading students on campus and doing so while they, um, you know, they misrepresent themselves as a student led uh, organization. And that's specifically the policy that they're violating that in that section 146 through 149 where we're talking about um you know ensuring that they would comply with it and if they didn't that um you know that it would be addressed because previously it hadn't been I, I believe that that should stay thank you um go ahead alan then stephanie um i'm not i'm only talking about a small uh sentence or two or paragraph that uh allows people or makes exception for people to be able to speak on their own in classrooms. I have a feeling this uh, agenda as it moves forward is going to be abused. There's room for abuse in this to the individual's opinion. And uh, I'll just, it doesn't really, it's no sweat off anybody's back if an individual is allowed to have their opinion on the campus. Um, and if we write that in, it's even if it is guaranteed by the constitution, um, it would be nice for people to be able to read 
and understand that they are freely allowed their opinions, no matter what their religious beliefs are or political beliefs on the campus for free speech. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Stephanie. Hi, um, another question for our lovely advisor, Armando. Um, so I am aware that the university has, um, a, how would I phrase it? They have their own uh, stance on freedom of speech. Would you be able to attest to what that document speaks to in terms of freedom of speech on our university campus? I am so sorry. Like it's three weeks, three weeks in, y'all. I don't. I did not even know that. Um, <laughs> but that is something great. I will bring up and bring up to to conversation when I have a meeting with Dr. Brown next week. <laughs> For sure, no worries. Um, so I would just like to be mindful of that, y'all. Um, the university does and has made um, statements regarding to freedom of speech on campus. Um, I can do my best to go ahead and find the document in which they do that. Um, but I would also like to attest to um, SR, the Brazen's resolution that we passed last year as well. That's already adopted. We've already brought that into the council, something that we're supposed to uphold. Um, and I would also like to attest that this is just, um, it's it speaks to um, not meta, it, basically just lying. You can't just miss, spread misinformation about abortion or any kind of medical procedure. So again, if if students are students are more than welcome to have or have their own opinions, they just can't be medically inaccurate. Um, or they can't attest to that, I would suppose. They can still say this, I'm sure. They can still talk about it. But we're talking about um, Auraria Health and all those kinds of things. They just can't they can't just let the the vans park on student property on un university campus and just stay there and spread medical misinformation. So I, I think it's more so targeted against those kinds of organizations and not students, if I'm correct. There, there is a line in here that specifically says that it's abortion is murder. And, you know, it's against people being able to say that, but a lot of people believe that. That is an opinion of a lot of more than one student, and uh, it's in here in writing. So it seems like it's an attack on free speech. Uh, at least there's things in here. If you're going to write those, you should guarantee someone's right to oppose them. Hey, Dan. Paul, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, to speak to what's kind of what Stephanie's saying, what Alan is saying, um, this, this piece of legislation has been around for a year, full year. Um, and I can tell you from the conversations that I've had in philosophy club, philosophy classes, and others um, about this very question that we they have they have gone on unhindered. Um, and uh, if what you're describing is a threat that this resolution poses, um, I figured it I would have either happened already, um, or I'd want to know like specifically again what line talks about impeding a student's ability to um, freely speak on this issue. Um, yeah, I, oh, and I want to say to the amendment of this document, I think that it would be redundant simply because students already have the right to speak freely on this issue. We're just we're just making a condemnation on a Supreme Court justice decision and um, asking that the university join us in this condemnation to speak on whether or not um, the funding of bail funds and um, abortion access groups would be uh, involving um, funding criminal acts. Um, I do think that, you know, calling um, people looking to achieve an abortion, like looking to obtain an abortion, a criminal act, simply because of this decision by the Supreme Court. Um, I think it, I think it's a pretty, um, pretty harsh, harsh turn to take when we consider this, the, the, the history of our country and um, people taking a stand for what's right and participating in what's called civil disobedience. And so I think in those states where their rights have been stripped from them and they have pursued an abortion and or they have an ectopic pregnancy or a miscarriage and they're being charged with an abortion, uh, I do think that we should fully support them whether or not the behavior has been deemed criminal by the states they are in. Thank you. Okay, so Steph, Stephanie, then Naomi, then Alan. Um, then I say we move to 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 vote on this. 
Yeah. Um, so I'm unable to find, um, I think it may, it may not have been adopted by the university as of yet, but it was in the works. Um, I don't think Gabe was present for that meeting. So I was going to ask him for his opinion and say, Hey, do you remember when this was talked about? Um, but I know that there is a freedom of speech task force. So if anyone is really, really, really passionate about freedom of speech, um, I can go ahead and see, um, if I have any connections to that kind of task force and see if, they still need um, a TSAC representative on that. Um, but yeah, no, I was just going to move to adopt the resolution, but I feel like we should uh, have some more conversation about that. So since that's already in the works, then I'm good. So did you move or? No, I don't think she No, did. I'd like okay. to hear what more people uh, have to say about it. Go, uh, go ahead, Naomi, and then Gabe, or then Al, and then Gabe. I move to get vote on this resolution um, because we are well past the time for debating on it. I second the motion. Well, this is actually a motion to mo to vote on the amendment to add um, a line that basically protects student speech from being criminalized when it regardless of your point of view on this. So we're going to vote on the on the amendment to the motion and then voting on the motion on the motion. All right. So Alan, this is on the amendment. Yay. Stephanie. Mike. No. James. No. Three. Abstain. Gabe. No. Alex. No. Naomi. No. Paul. No. And I abstain. All right. Let's tally this up and let's see. Let the record reflect that the motion to amend the resolution did not pass. So, okay, so that was that was the uh, the voting on the amending of the motion. I see someone's hand up. Let's see if Gabe, do you have something? Uh, yeah, just real quick. Um, to Stephanie's point and stuff. Um, I found the freedom of expression. Thing that was passed by the Board of Trustees, and I will put it um, in the chat. I believe Armando may have already done so. Thank you, Armando. Oh, Thank you, Gabe. Thank you, Armando. Fantastic. Okay. Motion to vote on this resolution. Is there a second to that motion to vote on the resolution? Yes. I Let the record reflect that the, the, there was a motion to vote, and it was seconded. All right, we move to vote. Alan. No. Nah. Stephanie. Yes, okay. James. Hi. Mike. Yes. Bree. Aye. Gabe. Yes. Alex. Aye. Naomi. Aye. Paul. I vote yes. And and I. Let the record reflect that the motion passed. And then Paul, next on the agenda, I guess it's a really quick top talking point of the essay competition for uh, gandering a little bit of student voices and their ideas. Would you like to speak on this? 
Yes, please. Thank you, Dan. Have the floor. So the, um, we were brainstorming ideas um, on what we um, could do to increase student engagement and, and kind of maybe even get some ideas for what we want to do in this year to come. And I thought that uh, essentially one of the things we could do is have an essay competition for a $500 scholarship um, to write a short essay, maybe a page, maybe two pages on what student government means to you. Maybe we have a few prompts. Maybe it says, um, you know, what do you think student government should do? What should student government consist of? Um, and or um, what's an idea for a proposal that you have the student government might take on, right? A few different ideas of prompts. And I'm thinking that maybe we could pair with the writing center and um, maybe get some help on grading these things once we get them. Um, but I, I think this would be a fabulous way of to, to spend some money on students while simultaneously getting student voice and getting ideas from, from our student body. So, um, and again, this is just, I'm just throwing this idea out here during this meeting. I'm gonna be working on something more concrete to present as like a resolution. Um, but like with my other two projects we've got going, I invite anyone interested in um, joining with me on this to um, reach out and we can get you on, um, on the ball for our, our potential essay competition for student engagement. We still need to reach out to the writing center. So this is very early stages, get in on the ground floor. Um, but yeah, that concludes what we really wanna do with it. Thank you, Gabe. Was that a new hand or was that a hand that was previous? Oh, this is a new one. Um, so while I love this idea, um, I remember that last year our council, our council uh, tried to like do a scholarship like rowdy and stuff, and we were told that we that we as student council cannot give out scholarships. Um, I don't know if things have changed. I don't know if either Armando knows something or when Dr. Barone comes back from uh, their leave and stuff, we can ask them. But we were told um, that we cannot grant scholarships as a student government. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Did I speak to that? Uh, Naomi had her hand. Oh, oh, go, sorry, my bad. Go ahead, Naomi, and then Paul. There is a loophole to that. Um, oh, first of all, I was going to say that, Paul, that is a brilliant idea. I love it. Thank you for putting that out there. So whenever we're ready to vote on that, um, I will second it, but um, no, there is a loophole to that. So we can't, he's right, um, we can't grant scholarships, um, but since we are technically considered, I think, uh, one of the organizations on campus, we can do um, Visa gift card prizes um, in which you can use those to purchase, I mean, just about anything. Um, that's how our student org had to do it last semester. We were not able to give cash prizes or, you know, put it through the university tuition, whatever, we couldn't do that because that's what one of our goals was too. Um, but you can do gift cards kind of situations as well, but that's a different organization. So I know TSAC may be different, but I'm just speaking from experience. So I, I agree with Gabe. I think that maybe we should wait to talk to Dr. Barone about that and just see if we can do something along the same lines because then they could use that visa to pay their tuition if that's where they wanted it to go towards um, or you know whatever else, but yeah. Thank you, Naomi. All right, if anyone has anything else, now's the time. If not, we will. Oh, Paul, yes, of course. How did I forget about you? I noticed, Stephanie, you got your hand raised, so I'll be very brief. But um, I, I think we should investigate more loopholes. I, I do think we should still move forward with it. I, thank you, Gabe, for this information. It is disheartening to hear, but I, you know, I, I think we should press on and try and see if there's another way we can get that money into a student's um, educational fund. Um, I. I'm somewhat opposed to the Visa gift card idea just because I think that they may, I don't know, we want it to be used for educational stuff. At least that's my two cents with this. Um, though uh, one way that I'm thinking is maybe if we pair with the Writing Center, maybe the Writing Center has the ability to issue such a scholarship wherein we can make a donation to the Writing Center to make that happen. Maybe. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie. Hey, yeah, no, I know when we did our, um, Oh my gosh, what was it? It was like the office decoration thing and we had gift cards. There was also another issue with gift cards just because they're super hard to track. Um, and we kind of got away with it just because we knew them really well. Um, but I would, again, we, I would say we need to talk a little bit more about the whole money thing and gift cards and scholarship and see if there's anything else that we can do. Thank you, Alex. Um, um, just another idea that I'm tossing out there is maybe we could even localize it within the bookstore so that way, um, you know, if someone did win the essay contest, they could just go to the bookstore with like a voucher. Um, I'm not sure if that's possible, but, um, you know, yeah, just, just some food for thought. Naomi. Um, 
I think we should also meet with Tan in the CMEI office. Um, maybe if uh, Dr. Barone doesn't have uh, enough information for it, we can also talk with Tan. She is very well established with um, making sure that we get out money accordingly to people who have like earned it from events and things like that as well. So she's an amazing resource. And if you guys would like, um, d depending on where we move forward with this, um, I can reach out to her and see how we can go about getting either those gift cards um, distributed um, because I know we tried to do Amazon ones this last um, semester, but um, that was just a mistake, but we were still able to do it. Um, and also instead of doing that, we were able to take them back and do visas instead. So um, I can speak with her as well to see how we can go about using our funding to get the money to the selected winner. Um, and if we don't want to do it towards, you know, just random things like a visa, we can see how we can get that to go towards um, either their tuition or just something that they need on campus, um, like always saying, like for educational purposes. Um, but she is a great resource, like I said, so I can reach out to her as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. So. Let's move on. Unless anyone's opposed, uh, let's move on to you, Mike. Let's um, your resolution to allocate budget committee funding. Have, have the floor, Mike. Yes, thank you. Um, so this is a resolution that I worked on with Paul, written by Paul and me as well, collaborated with Alex, um, endorsed by Dan, Naomi, Rhea, and Alan. And this is just a resolution that I'm going to read in full. Um, at least let me do the abstract and let you guys know. But it's a resolution to provide the budget committee with powers to make small fiscal allocations. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So the abstract, we the Student Ed Advocacy, Advocacy Council believe that the Budget Committee should have the ability to make financial allocations for the council for amounts under $250. We believe that this will empower the council to make sure the office has supplies as well as um, stocking refreshments for students who visit the office. This framework would assign the approval of any fiscal allocation under $250 to the Budget Committee where it could be voted on by the members of the Budget Committee. So. Um, as it stands right now, the budget committee members are me, um, Re, Naomi, Paul, and Dan. Um, this framework would also include a budget allotment of $2,500 to be used in these small funding allocations. This amount could be renewed by a vote on the council in future, um, should it be necessary. This framework also includes a three-part accountability, uh, accountability framework to ensure transparency. And I motion that we continue reading this, um, the contents of this unanimous consent. And second. Second, Mike. Okay, so curious. whereas we, the Student Advocacy Council, find it find that in order to help, in order to effectively to attend um, to the needs of the student body, we need to be able to make simple fiscal allocations outside of the weekly council meetings. Whereas we find that it would be more efficacious. Uh, struggle with this word, but um, efficacious to sorry, to create a process of approving small funds within our budget committee in order to more easily fund, or whereas in order to more easily fund small scale projects as well as supply the TSEC office to put on more events. Whereas we, the Student Advocacy Council, approve powers to the budget committee to make, cease, make these simple funding decisions on behalf of the entire council. Whereas the maximum per amount per purchase will be $250. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, Funding proposals under $250 go to the Budget Committee for debate review, then voted upon on behalf of the Council via a simple majority of the Budget Committee. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved that this framework has a three-part accountability structure in place to provide transparency to the Council, as well as the greater student body of the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved that the first accountability structure in place um, be a detailed account of any funding proposals voted upon by the budget committee to be presented by the presented to the student advocacy council by the chair me of the budget committee every two weeks. Therefore, this account will be on record for any questions from other council members or any other people of the greater public. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the second accountability structure in place um, be that any leftover funds not spent on a funder proposal approved by the budget committee will be returned to the council budget. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the third accountability structure in place being that the budget committee will only be allotted $2,500 on a renewable basis, pending majority approval by the council. If the budget committee requires more funds, then they can present a funding request to the council. And that's all I've written so far on this. That's all that's on this. Unless anyone objects, I would motion to consider the question or to call the question to a vote. Is there a second on second? All right. Let the record reflect that it, the motion to move move to the question at hand and has been seconded. 
Move to vote. Allen. Yay. Stephanie. Yes. Michael. Yes. James. Aye. He's not here. Um, Gabe. Yes. Alex. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Paul. I am a ple I am pleased to vote yes with the rest of the council. And I for mine. So let the record reflect that the motion to alloc to allocate to allocate money to the budget committee for small purchases has been passed by the council. All right. So section Section four of our announcement. So final business. So is there any any burning burning things that need to be talked about now? If not, we move to public comment. Um, there's something uh, I wanted to bring up since since we have time. Um, if that's okay with you guys. What do you have? Um, so uh, since I have uh, you know Stephanie here and everybody else as well, I just kind of want to put it out there. Something that. Um, I wanted to see and make sure that, uh, you know, everybody kind of is in support of is I want to write up a uh, proposal to like the student board, or I'm sorry, the senior leaders and then present it to the board and things like that um, is kind of to show some support for, you know, in spite of the Roe versus Wade incident that we should at least kind of start getting feminine products um, on campus for free because CU Denver does that. And I believe that you know, some offices like ours does have, you know, some uh, free, you know, products there, but we should have accessible products everywhere on campus. Um, so I just wanted to see if y'all would be open to supporting that. Oh, I would. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Um, I just want to say, um, so did we not have any uh, public comment? Any public commenters? Well, public comment was after this. I said if we didn't have any additional oh, okay. comment, then you'd move to go to public comment. So I guess. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Stephanie loves the idea. Um, Minor point of clarification, then. Yeah, so, yeah. My my, but, apologies, my no, apologies on that. You're good. Okay, I, uh, so. If I if I can really quickly just say, um, I support you a thousand percent on that, Naomi. I look forward to working with you on that project. It's ridiculous that um, it's ridiculous that those are still things people have to pay for. Thank you both, Paul, uh, Alan. I support that idea. Um, does that include um, like condoms and things like that? I think you can. I think you can get free ones at the health center. I'll double okay. check on that, but I think you can get free ones at the health center. Either way, I'm in support of this. It's a good idea. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Let's see. Um, someone saw. Okay. So I guess, Gabe. Yes, you can get free condoms at the health center. So yes, you can get free condoms at the health center. Thank you, Gabe. All righty. So. If, there's no further discussion. Uh, that's a great idea, Naomi. If you want to write something up, then we can, you know, officially propose to the council. That would be greatly, uh, I would greatly like to see that. All right, thank you for that. All right, so let's move on to section five, public comment, unless there's, yeah, public comment. So is there anybody from the public um, that's here to make comment to us? You get five minutes, and if actually, per the resolution that passed a few weeks ago, if you note in the, put your name in the chat and that you want to speak and then go ahead and speak. You guys have the floor now, or you all have the floor now. The public. Not hearing any. Give it one more second. Someone was typing just a second ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, Amanda. OK, so I. Perfect. All right, well, I'm not hearing any public comments, so as per as per the um, the agenda, public comment is no longer open. And then I can read what uh, uh, Armando wrote. Naomi, I can get information from my former institution who just instilled that same movement. Follow up with me. Okay, thank you so much, Armando. Um, awesome. Well, then I move to uh, adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. That. Second. All right. And, all right. Well, then everybody, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Thanks, everyone.
Go ahead, you can sign. Yeah, how do I? I'm trying to figure out how to stop the. Uh, oh, no, did you sign? Do with that. Start giving me requests. Unless just in teams, there's going to teams. Yeah. I know. I know.